Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the homeless and the poor here in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosada. My name is Minister Warren Rudd, and tonight's Bible study, we're going to be talking about grief and those who want to bring you grief because they are threatened by your vision, by your anointing, and by your call. A lot of times we get that in the church, but a lot of times we also get it in the workplace. We also get it in our own home sometimes, and even amongst friends. That's why I'm dealing with the homeless and the drug addicted and the mentally ill and those who are prisoners, because they act out because they're grieved or they're full of despair, and they got to find something to replace it. And a lot a lot of times that's sin. But there are some people who want to drive you into grief. They want to make sure nobody respects you. They want to make sure everything you do looks bad. But we're going to be talking about a guy tonight by the name of Nehemiah who had to conquer that same thing while he was building walls. So tonight, I want you to get your Bible, get your paper and your pen, and get ready for a mighty word from God. And as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless. saying, I am doing a 
that great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Sam Bound his servant unto me in the like manner of the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. Boy, wait till I break that down. Wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen, and Gishmu said, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Then I said unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou said, but thou friendless, or make it up, you making this stuff up. <coughs> Y'all friend, make them up, that out of thy own heart. Mm. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hand. Verse 10. Afterward I came unto the house of Shimea, the son of Delilah, and the son of Methabel, who was shut up. And he said, Let us meet together in the house of God, where within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, that they will come to slay thee. Yes, in the night will they come to slay thee. And I said, Should such a man as I flee? Hello. And who is there that, being as I am, will go into the temple to save? life. I will not go. Hmm. Verse 12. And look, I perceive that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Sambal had hired. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin and that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me or discredit me. My God, Think thou upon Tobiah and Sambal according to these, according to these their works, and on the prophetess, that let you know there was a woman who was a prophet, huh? a prophetess, no die, and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. They're trying to intimidate me. So the wall was finished in the 20th and 5th day of the month of Elu, and 50 and 2 days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes. For they perceived that this work was wrote of God. They perceived it was work of God. Now I'm going to break it all down for you. Let me read a few things I wrote down. When you are anointed, have a vision, and have a call in your life, people will try and bring you to the place called Oh No. Or grief. Amen. They want to bring you grief because you are using your anointing, vision, and gift to help others. When they think you should use it for use it to help them serve their purpose. Okay. If they feel that you are a threat to their position, prestige, and power, they will try and turn everyone against you and keep you in a place of grief, which will render you defenseless. Amen. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. or a place to start watching. Amen? And Ono meaning, watch this, and Ono means a place of grief. Mm -hmm. See, that's what the city means in Hebrew. A place of grief. Word. So they were trying to bring him down to Ono. A place of grief. How many people try to bring you to a place of grief? Amen. 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 <laughs> when these people are position, when these people are position, prestige, and power try to bring you grief, you start praising God, skip past grief, and go to watch him. Amen. Remember, it sits between Judah and Samaria, a place of what? Praise and a place of watching. And in the middle is what? Grief. But you got to learn to skip over that Amen. and go to watch him, especially if you're in warfare, especially if you got a vision, especially 
watch if you got some ambition. Amen. Then, once you finish watching, skip back right back on over to grief and go back to praise of God. But don't stop that grief. Oh, no. Don't stop it. Don't do it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's when it's time for you to build your wall. Walls do two things. They keep things out and they keep things in. But you've got to know who and what to keep in and who and what to keep out. Amen. Amen. Now, the Hebrew name of, the, of Nehemiah means this. God's counsel and God's comfort. Now, God's counsel and God's comfort also mean or is a symbol of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. Amen. His name also means this. Repentance of God. The book of Nehemiah is a continuation of the events introduced in the book of Ezra. The major effort by the children of Israel at this time was the reconstruction of the walls of the city of Jerusalem. They constantly fought against outside influences of the nations that surrounded them and that conspired against them on every opportunity. <laughs> Amen. Y'all got people like that. All right, let's look at this. Let's look at some more background. Sambiah and Tobiah were desperate. The wall was almost complete, and their efforts to stop this construction was failing. Anytime you know you're going somewhere. Remember last week I talked about don't look back. How many of y'all remember that? And I hope some of y'all chose not to look back no more. So you should be going forward. And anytime you make up that decision, you're going to get people coming up against you. And they want to put you right back in the place of grief so you go drink, so you go get high, so you won't work for the Lord. Amen. Well, I ain't even started yet. Amen. So they, so they try a new approach, centering their attacks on Nehemiah's character. You hear what I'm saying? So if they can't stop you from fulfilling your vision or what your purpose is, then they're going to assassinate you. They're going to call you a whore. They're going to say you're not anointed. They're going to say you ain't nothing but a bum. You remember, oh, he been in jail. Oh, you remember, we saw him on the street. They want to assassinate your character because now you're being successful in God. Now you made up your mind you don't want to stay in your condition. Now you want to go for it despite your past. Amen. So they want to assassinate your character. And these are only, now watch this, this ain't the people who are low with you. These are people who are in what? Position, prestige, uh -huh. and power. Amen. Now, sometimes that don't mean to have to be a boss. That could be your family member. Amen. That could be your friend sitting next to you. That could be a, a person in a woman's home. Amen. That could be a person sitting right here in the men's, men's time. Because they feel like they got more power, more prestige, uh -huh. amen, and a better amen. position. Amen. amen. Better watch them. Amen. 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 <laughs> and false reports. Personal attacks hurt, and when the criticism is unjustified, it is easy to fall into grief and despair. Amen. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all have people lie on you and all of a sudden you knew it was a lie, but then all of a sudden you're like, man, I don't know why they keep talking about me. Now you don't fall into grief and despair. If you know it ain't true, don't think on it. Okay. Focus on what he said. When you are doing God's work, you will receive a task on your character. Follow Nehemiah's example by trusting God to accomplish the task and by looking uh, and by looking unjustified in, at insults. Amen? Amen? So follow his example. Let's go back up to verse 1. We're going to look at some stuff. Nehemiah 6 and 1. And we're going to break down. I told you names are very important in the Bible. What it say? Now it came to pass when Sam died. Tobiah and Gishon the Arabian and the rest of our enemy heard that I had built the wall, that they that there was no breach left there in, there was no flaw in it. Now I have made up my mind I'm going forward. The wall is perfectly up. You ain't getting in and ain't nothing getting out. Hello. But watch this also. That there was no breach left in it. Though at the time I had not set up the doors upon the gate, so they still an opening. We haven't put the gates up yet. So there's still a way in. Yeah. That's why you gotta keep watching. See what gate they coming through. Actually, it was 12 gates. I talked about them before, but those, those are all spiritual attributes. Maybe one day I'll teach on it again. But let's look at the names of these people. Sam Bow is first. Sam Bow's name means 
sin, the God that's healed. Now it's little case G. The sin, the God is healed. Little case G. What I say about little case G versus <coughs> little case G deals with idolatry. Yeah. Okay. Capital G is always talking about our God. Oh, Amen. Yeah. So, sin, the God, little case G is healed. He was a governor of Samaria around 407 BC. He was a practicing Jew. See this? Oh, I'm going to get y'all now. He practiced. He was a practicing Jew. He was the governor of Samaria. He was a practicing Jew. So he was what? More religious. And his daughter was married to the grandson of Jerusalem's high priest. So that means he would have what? Position. Now we're going to be talking about people with position, people with prestige, and people with power. So he had position. Amen. Amen. Here we go. Now, Tobiah, his name meaning Yah is good, or God is good. Amen. He was a practicing Jew too, <laughs> who lived in the resident chamber in the temple. Now watch this. He's saved. Ooh. Now, Tobiah is saved. Hello. He enjoyed aristocratic favor and had the title servant bestowed on him by the per Persian ruler. He opposed the building of Jerusalem because it would weaken his political authority in the area. He was prestigious. Now watch that. You don't know how he saw the religious and the unsaved coming at Nehemiah. Hmm. How many been in the church and you have religious people talking about you? Then you had the un you had the saved people talking about you. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. They don't even agree half the time in the church. But watch this one. Now kiss you. Kiss you. Now his name means rain. So you got the unsaved, I mean you got the saved, the religious, and rain upon your parade who is unsaved coming against you. Now you got some of these three people who disagree, but they will join together to stop you from going forward. They will join together to stop you from progressing. They will join together to bring grief into your life because you're doing what God told you to do. Hello. Oh, come on. They will join together just to stop you. Amen. Amen. So guess what? His name means Ray. He is an Arabian ruler. It sounds like he's a false doctor too. He's an Arabian ruler of Qadar and wealthy, great personal power with the tribes of uh, Syrian desert. He is unsaved, but has power. So there you go. You got what? Position, prestige, and power. You got the religious, saved, and unsaved coming at you to bring you grief, to stop you from doing God's purpose. Y'all hear it? Amen. 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 How can these three folk join together to stop you? Mm. And it happens in the church all the time. I tell people all the time, you don't know you have an anointing or a call in your life or a ministry until you receive a Judas. Amen. Mm. About two or three. And how you handle your Judas. Oh, then you know you got a ministry. Amen. But if you handle your Judas incorrectly, you got to do it all over again. How did Jesus handle his Judas? With love. Yes, love. Amen. Amen. Judas had an opportunity to repent. Yes. That's what lets you know he was unsaved. He wouldn't. But he still fell into despair. The devil got him in despair and in grief to the point that he knew he touched the wrong man and he hung himself. The Bible was said his bowels. When all he had to do was repent and come back to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, go back up. Let's go back up to verse 1. Now, the king passed from Sam Bowen to buy and the Arabia, and the rest of our enemies heard I had built walls, that there was no breach left therein, though at the time I had set it up the doors upon the gates. Now, verse 2. That Sam Bowen and Gisham sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me. Amen. Tell somebody, whatever you do, don't go to Ono.